This is Gigabyte's M27Q, one of the best 1440p high refresh rate monitors I've ever tested, and it has a surprising and unique feature built in, a KVM. Now, KVM is normally a box that sits on your desk that lets you connect multiple computers to one set of peripherals and monitors. So you press a button and it switches from system A to system B. The fact that this has one of those built in means that if you're, say, someone who runs a Linux gaming PC with a second graphics card and a Windows VM passed through to that, with a single press of a button, you can switch from gaming on your main Linux OS to gaming on your Windows VM in almost an instant. It's fantastic. So let's set it up just like that and find out how it gets on. So right now we're playing CSGO directly on Ubuntu and uh, for context, the host GPU that the sort of main Ubuntu Linux graphics card I'm using is a 2080 Ti. So unsurprisingly, we're getting three, 400 FPS it's a pretty decent experience. Now the monitor itself is also doing a really good job and that's because it's just as a, as a base monitor, even forgetting the KVM feature, it's fantastic. So for context, uh, it's fairly similar to the G27Q that I did a more normal review of fairly, fairly recently. So if you wanna check that out, there'll be a video up in the cards above for you to take a look at. But to give you the, the headlines, for this one, it is a 27 inch, 1440p, 170 hertz free sync display that covers 97% of the Adobe RGB spectrum. That's a wider color space or coverage of a color space than the FI27Q-P, a much, much more expensive monitor. Now it also has a very impressive set of stats in terms of input lag and its response time. The input lag I measured with my time sleuth over HDMI was just 1.1 milliseconds, which is incredibly low. It's one of the lowest that I've seen. I think the only uh, one that I've seen a little bit lower was 0.8 milliseconds, so slightly better, but still, this is fantastic. In terms of its response time, testing with the uh, overdrive set to its slowest setting, the, the picture quality setting, well, that was just four milliseconds from black to white. It was a bit slower on white to black as they almost always are at around 12 milliseconds, but the fact that there wasn't much, if any, overshoots, and again, that was on its slowest setting, that's pretty fantastic. There also wasn't all that much ghosting either. There was a slight trail, as you would expect from basically any IPS level monitor, but it was, again, just as good as the FI27Q-P, which costs almost twice as much, making this, even forgetting the KVM feature, a must-have monitor. And as for the KVM feature, that's really simple. Plug in your keyboard and mouse to the two USB ports on the back, the USB-B cable goes to your main system, and plug in either one of the two HDMIs or one uh, the display port to your main system, plug in a second system via the USB-C port, and you're good to go. All you do is press the button on the back and it automatically switches everything over, including the display and your peripheral. So let's do just that. Now, I've set up this system with an RTX 2060 as my pass-through graphics card into the Windows VM, and I've done that for good reason. The RTX 2060 has the display link connector, which is basically just a USB-C port meant for VR, but since it's an active USB-C port, meaning it supports both USB and display ports over the same cable, the same connector, this should all just work. So let's press the KVM button on the back and let it switch over. Now it does take a second or two for the display to catch up and then another second or two for your peripherals too, but once you're in, it's literally like using it natively. As an aside, if you want to see a video of how to set up this sort of VFIO IO MMU pass-through system from a beginner like me, then feel free to let me know in the comments. It's pretty simple, but there are a few quirks and a few hoops that you need to jump through. So I fired up CSGO on Windows and it's a really good experience. Uh, of course, we're now using half the CPU cores and half the RAM, and of course an RTX 2060 instead of a 2080 Ti to game on, so we are getting a bit less performance, but we're still looking at over 150 FPS average, so it's still a, 
very smooth and responsive feel. One of the interesting things is that I tested the total system input lag on both uh, my sort of reference system, my Underdesk PC, and in Linux and in the Windows VM, and they were all really very close, which means no matter how you want to game with this monitor, you're gonna have a pretty decent experience. The thing is that playing CSGO doesn't really make all that much sense. I mean, it works in Ubuntu, it works on Linux, and so you wouldn't bother playing it in a Windows VM when you're getting less performance and requiring a second graphics card if you can just play it natively. But a game like COD Modern Warfare, which thanks to its lack of porting to Linux and its various anti-cheats making it pretty, pretty difficult to run natively, well that makes a bit more sense, so let's fire that up and have a play. Right, so I'm in COD uh, and uh, there's definitely some, some optimizations that I need to do to make this a, a more playable experience because while we're still getting uh, like 50 to 70 FPS average, the playing experience, the, the frame times are absolutely awful. Um, and so I definitely need to optimize that, but that's not the monitor's fault. It's the, um, you know, VFIO setup's fault. So I wouldn't worry too much about that if you do pick this up. With that said, um, the, the experience pretending that it did work is, especially for the monitor side, pretty seamless. Like I said, you just click a button and it's there. So it, it makes a lot of sense. Of course, there are plenty of other use cases for why you'd want a KVM like this built into your monitor, even for a, a Linux system like this, including, for example, being able to use the Adobe suite for work, but then being able to quickly switch back over to your main machine or I suppose vice versa and even for using it for its more intended use case of having, say, a work laptop connected and then being able to switch over to your gaming machine at the end of the day, well, that's still really useful to have around. There are a couple of limitations of the KVM in this setup, namely the fact that there's only two USB ports. Of course, you can fix that with a fairly simple, cheap USB 3 hub, which if you're planning on going down the route of having you know, a, a VFIO Linux gaming machine and want to use this monitor with it, I would highly recommend as it would let you connect all of your USB 3 per or your USB peripherals, like your keyboard and mice, but also microphones, headsets, controllers, all that sort of stuff, and have that automatically switch over for you. As for the monitor itself, there really isn't much for me to complain about. The stand is a little on the limited side and isn't quite as nice as the FI27Q-P's, and my specific model does have a fair bit of backlight bleed down at the bottom right hand corner on darker images, but I can't guarantee that that's indicative of every M27Q made and not just shipping damage on my specific one. The fact that the response time was so good, even in its slowest setting, there wasn't any overshoot, there was next to no ghosting that you can see in the UFO test, at least, you know, for a, an IPS panel. The fact that it covers more of the Adobe RGB color space than the FI27Q-P, like it's a much wider range there. And the fact that it costs almost half as much this is insane, like this, even forgetting the KVM aspect of this, this is one of, if not the best 1440p monitor you can buy right now. And like I said, it's half the price of Gigabyte's own FI27Q-P. And it has the KVM feature, which even if you don't want to game on a Linux system with multiple graphics cards, if you just want to occasionally hook up your work laptop and work with your peripherals and your monitor and then swap back to your main desktop, that's perfectly possible with a single cable. And looking at the number of Amazon reviews to the G27Q versus this, this looks criminally underrepresented in the number of people who are buying one. And that's honestly something I recommend you fix by going and picking one of these up like right now. It's one of, if not the best 1440p high refresh rate monitors I have tested. And beyond the possible, you know, I suppose quality concerns with the panels, this is, like I said, utterly fantastic. It has a legitimately unique feature, which while may not be for everyone, is incredibly cool to see. And the price tag is almost identical to the, the standard G27Q. And like I said, about half what the FI27Q-P costs. So yeah, it seems kind of like a no brainer to me. Now, I don't often give out awards, especially these days, 
but this has impressed me enough for me to give it a top tier award. It's legitimately, like, mind-blowingly fantastic, and so, until proven otherwise, I'm gonna be highly, highly recommending this monitor. Now, if you do wanna pick one of these up or check out pricing when and where you watch this, feel free to take a look at the top link in the description down below. That is an affiliate link, goes to Amazon and will take you to a local Amazon store where you can see all that good stuff. And otherwise, I will leave a link to the G27Q review if you wanna check that one out, it'll be on the end cards as well. And feel free to check out the FI27Q as well to see how that one compares. Otherwise, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the KVM feature? What do you think of the panel, potential quality issues, and just generally, what do you think of the monitor? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Of course, there are plenty of other links in the description down below if you want to check them out and ways to support the channel. There's other affiliate links or places like Overclocks UK if you're buying from there. There's Patreon if you want to get ad for our sponsor free videos and access to our Money Men Discord chat, or there's even merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one if you wanna check them out. Like I said, feel free to check out the other videos on the end cards, including the FI27Q-P and the G27Q monitor reviews. And that's pretty much it for me. I'll leave you a piece. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, do leave those in the comments down below and we'll see you on the next video.